Shout out to tell them, everybody. We hope everybody's Shabbat enjoying Shabbat. your Shabbat today. Uh, we greet you. We, we definitely pray the high for allowing us to come on today and, and to see see all you guys and you guys to, to be a part of the, the the lesson today. We are definitely going into the tribe of Gad. We're, we're definitely <laughs> reaching into some of these uh, tribes that the majority of us tuning in are. So we, <laughs> we definitely uh, hope that you guys are going to enjoy this lesson. Um, and a lot of you guys who are listening should be identifying with Gad and we'll love to see who does identify with Gad today. Um, just continually praise the higher for all the things that he's doing in each and every one of our lives and we give glory unto the higher and we give glory unto the Son Yahche Meshiach and the Holy Spirit Ruach Kodoshi. So we just thank you that we all are in good health. We're in good health. Uh Ahaya's been keeping us so that we can even come and watch this lesson and, and partake together. So uh, many blessings unto him, many blessings unto our, fa our people, our family, um, the people who are just following the church. Um, we definitely just thank you all and may you just continue to grow with us and continue to learn through these lessons. Um, may our high just continue to prosper us to, to just do work. So definitely thank you all. We definitely pray the high of all his goodness and grace toward us. And uh, I'm your brother, Zachwa. If you're any, if you're a new person coming on, and this is your brother. What's up, fool? Hey, Shalom. So Shabbat to Shalom. That means uh, happy Sabbath to everybody. And let's get this lesson underway. Casa, you got any uh, um, updates that you I want? I thought your intro is good. What your intro is good? <laughs> <laughs> What's your intro got to do with updates, man? <laughs> All right, let's get going, uh, man. All right. The Ten Tribes uh, predominantly went to the regions of Osiris, which is the islands of the Indian Ocean, Pacific Ocean, the Americas, and the Caribbean. They are known as the Aboriginals, Indigenous, or Natives of those lands and islands. Today, the Ten Tribes are scattered across the world presently, so they are not regulated to being in one specific area of the world right now. The Ten Tribes consist of Reuben, Simeon, Dan, Naphtali, Issachar, Zebulon, Gad, Asher, Ephraim, and Manasseh. In one's personal search for one's tribal origin, one must start by prayer because we have to make our request known with supplication. Then one has to look at our father's lineage to know the tri our tribes according to the scriptures like Numbers chapter 1 verse 2. If one's ancestry stems back to the slaves, the Negroes, the Bantus of Africa, or the cargo slave ships, then one is more than likely from the tribe of Judah, Benjamin, or Levi, with a slim chance of Simeon or the Ten Tribes. On the other hand, if one's ancestry stems back to the Native Americans, the indigenous people of the Americas and the Caribbeans, or the aboriginals and indigenous tribes of the Indian Ocean and Pacific Ocean, then you are from the Ten Tribes of Israel. This series of lessons are to identify the 12 tribes individually according to the spiritual indicators that the patriarchs documented their children would face. We know the signs and curses that help identify the children of Israel around the world today. Yet, through the spiritual indicators in the admonitions of the patriarchs, one can identify which specific tribe a person of the house of Israel originates from. It is by the Spirit that Ahaya has given grace to truly identify which tribe people actually come from since it is she that brings things to remembrance, searcheth all things, and we cannot know anything except the Spirit reveal them. And you can reference John chapter 13, 16, verse 13 and 14 and 26 and 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 and 11 for understanding. Now getting into the tribe of God, Moses blessed God according to the blessings of Ahaya. And let's see what Moses said to help us understand what is to come for the children of God. If you can start at Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1, and then we read verse 20 and 21, please. Zachary. Deuteronomy chapter 33, verse 1. And this is the blessing wherewith Moses, the man of Elohim, blessed the children of Israel before his death. Deuteronomy 33 and 20. And of Gad he said, Blessed be he that enlarges Gad. Notice he said, Blessed be he. So he's referring to the one that actually blesses Gad, and that one is Yache. 
He is who will strengthen Gad in the end. All right, continue, please. He dwelleth as a lion. And that's how you know he's talking about Yahshua because the scripture in Genesis, Jacob said, Judah coucheth as a lion. Who shall rouse him up? Or who shall, what is it? Who shall wake him up? So, uh, specific wording, I, I don't want to mess up. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was thinking you're the Judah. You should know. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's that uh, Judah the lion's well. There you go. Then it goes into... That's why. Yeah, that's why. That's your tribe. <laughs> that's that's what it said. <laughs> I didn't want to mess it up because you had already messed it up. So I'm like, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> thank you for correcting it. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's how you know I'm not a Judah. <laughs> Uh, uh, I'll read it? the whole thing. You got it? Oh, yeah, I got it here. Okay. It says, Genesis 49 and 9, Judah is a lion's whelp. From the prey, my son, thou art gone up. He stooped down. He coucheth as a lion, and as an old lion, who shall rouse him up? So you can see in Deuteronomy, Moses is referring to that same lion, the lion from the tribe of Judah, Yahweh. Right? So he dwelleth as a lion. So he is king. He is ruler. Continue, please. And teareth the arm with the crown of the head. Now, this was amazing. Ahaya showed that he tears the arm of the sinners of the Gentiles. The arm in the Hebrew language, you'll find, you see, they'll talk about the right arm, the strong arm. Arm represents strength, the power. So he's going to tear the, the power of the Gentiles. And it goes on to say, with the crown of the head and the crown of the head of the sinners of the gentiles is satan he is their crown their ruler hence this is a right this blessing upon gad why is it specifically speaking of gad in this blessing for yache because yache is going to strengthen gad in the end to overcome sinners of the gentiles the troops that come against the children of israel according to prophecy so this was foretelling that yache would destroy satan and his power. Continue, please, in verse 21. And he provided the first part for himself. Still speaking of Yache, because <laughs> the first part, the firstborn is his. Sanctify all the firstborn unto him, <laughs> right? Do you? Right. Because they're in a portion of, because they're in a portion of the lawgiver. Mm -hmm. Was he seated? Sorry. This is all good. That's speaking of Yache again, because he is Melchizedek, king and priest. So the portion of the lawgiver is his. As it says in Genesis 49 and 10, the scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet until Shiloh come. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. So these blessings were also telling of Yache as well, of what, he's, what he is and what he was coming to do. All right, continue, please. And he came with the heads of the people. And indeed he did, because it was foretelling. Yahshua was who came with Joshua. And when you read Joshua chapter 5, verse 13 to 15, he was the captain of the host of Ahaya that came to deliver. Right? Uh, continue, please. And also future tense, he's going to come with his saints. So, Yes. <laughs> yes, he is. He executed the justice of Ahia and his judgments with Israel. And you notice it said he did it with Israel because he was the one leading with Israel following. And even so, in the end, he's going to complete that promise he gave to Abraham to judge the nation. In Genesis 15 and 14, when Yahweh comes in the sky, he's going to do his judgments again with Israel because we know, according to Joel chapter 2, the angels are going to empower the remnant of the children of Israel that are there to fight. And Gad is going to be, Gad is going to really be strengthened to be as that lion and fulfill this prophecy. Uh, Jacob testified actually of the good and the bad that will befall the posterity of Gad. And it's interesting now that we have a more understanding of the blessings that was to come for them. Uh, can we read Genesis 49, verse 1 and verse 19, please? Genesis 49, verse 1. And Jacob called unto his sons and said, Gather yourselves together, that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Genesis 49 and 19. 
Gad, a troop shall overcome him. And indeed so. He's been overcome. The nations have overcome him, right? But he shall overcome at the last. God shall be empowered by Yahweh in the end to overcome. And this blessing, Issachar understood it. If we read Testament of Issachar chapter 5, verse 8, please. For unto Gad hath it been given to destroy the troops that are coming upon Israel. So now we understand with precepts, we get understanding of what all this was referring to. Yache, that lion, is going to empower Gad to fight in the end and destroy the troops, which are the sinners of the Gentiles that come upon Israel here in these end times. And it's going to be interesting in this lesson. By the time we get to the end, we're going to see what that enlargement of Gad also means in the spirit. All right. And also, as we know from the prior lessons, the inhabitants of Judah, the southern kingdom, is going to be there in the land to fight. And now we know that Gad will be there as well because they have to fulfill this prophecy. And interesting enough, here in America, Many of the children of Gad are here. <laughs> and right. Many of them think they're from the southern kingdom, but they're actually the children of Gad. Right. So they're going to be getting out, getting to the places. <laughs> they might even think they're from the southern kingdom, but then all of a sudden, <laughs> I hear so much trying to they really come from. All things will be fulfilled. All right, so let's jump in. The Testament of Gad, chapter 1. Don't mind, Brother Zachwa. A copy of the Testament of Gad. What things he spake unto his sons in the hundred and twenty-fifth year of his life, saying unto them, Hearken, my children, I was the ninth son born to Jacob, and I was valiant in keeping the flocks. They see God, his children, they are they known for valiance, they're known for athletic ability, strength. All right, continue, please. Accordingly, I guarded at night the flock. And they're protective. Even as a lion, valiant and protective, All right? Continue, please. And whenever the lion came, or the wolf, or any wild beast against the fold, I pursued it and overtaking it. I seized his foot with my hand and hurled it about a stone throw, so killed it. And they see the sons of Gad, they are valiant, protective, and they're warriors. As you see, Gad was fearless. He went after the actual lion. It didn't come after him. You can see when they are upright, they are they're fierce, and the testimonies attest to it. Can you read First uh, Chronicles chapter twelve, verse eight, please? And of the Gadites, there separated themselves unto David in the hold to the wilderness, men of might and men of war fit for the battle, that could handle shield and buckler, whose faces were like the faces of lions, and were as swift as the rose upon the mountains so they were athletic and they was they were fierce they they weren't afraid of anything god's children have these lion-like characteristics they are valiant protective yet when they're in unbelief they also struggle with being hasty in anger as a lion the teeth of god and then struggles that when in unbelief they fall into right and god attested of how hastiness affects his children and what what brings it about? I mean, what it leads to. Um, can you read Testament of Gad, chapter four, verse seven, please? For the spirit of hatred worketh together with Satan, through hastiness, through hastiness of spirit, and all things to men's death. There we see how that stum that that struggle with hastiness is what helps Satan get Gad to fall into the spirit of hatred, which is the chief issue for the children of Gad spirit of hatred leads them into error in all things unto their death now we have been encouragement that in the scriptures god encourages his children to seek the judgments of ahaya which is his word his law and the admonitions help keep gad from falling to the, the errors of hastiness or irascibility we look at sirach chapter 4 verse 30 please be not as a lion in thy house nor frantic among thy servants. So well, the admonitions, the encouragement to not be as a lion is to not be overbearing and not be hot headed over your house. Don't and then not to be frantic is interesting because when God is un, in unbelief, the hastiness can also make them frantic in situations where to describe how a Gadite person might be like 
they all they're fierce they're 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 valiant they're protective so they they want they'll be hot headed they're willing to go for the battle but yet when trouble really comes they can get frantic even as when you remember when the egyptians were coming they found the israelites when they tried to leave at the sea right and right. It, right the gadites them and levi is interesting it was gad and levi <laughs> two people that are like that get angry real fast and whatnot yet when the egyptians came they were trying to they had an idea to try and get, get, jump in between them and try to confuse them like got a little frantic and wasn't like abiding in faith to stay right there and believe so that's a thing that gad has to overcome staying temperate staying in faith as the word frantic means to be wild or distraught with fear, anxiety, or other emotions. So children of God, especially in these times, as the times are coming, it's important to really grow in faith. Stay temperate in the midst of it all and not grow anxious or, or distraught with fear with what's coming. And now you hopefully understand what is trying to lead you that way. That's the spirit of the hastiness. So now you know it. They temperate and believe that Ahaya will deliver. Uh, Gad learned these things from his own experiences and could see how these spirits worked against him when he repented from his heart. Even so it is for his children to this day. They must see what is against them for themselves and repent on their own accord in order to be delivered from the spirits that attack their tribe, even as their father did. So Gad, you truly have an inner battle. You have a fight within yourself. And only Yache can really bring you out of what's attacking you. Uh, let's continue in the Testament of Gad, chapter 1, verse 4, please. Now Joseph, my brother, was feeding the flock with us for upwards for 30 days. And being young, he fell sick by reason of the heat. He returned to Hebron to our father, who made him lie down near him because he loved him greatly. And Joseph told our father that the sons of Zilpha and Bilhah were slaying the best of the flock and eating them against the judgment of Reuben and Judah. The dominion was the older brothers, Reuben the firstborn and Judah, a leader in the family. They had dominion over the rest of their brothers, right? Continue, please. But he saw that I had delivered the lamb out of the mouth of a bear and put the bear to death, but had slain the lamb being grieved concerning that it could not live and that we had eaten it. Now, you see there, Gad was protective. He delivered the lamb, as is his nature. And he had compassion on the lamb because he seen that he could not live. But he didn't remain in subjection to the judgment of his elder brothers, which showed he did what was right in his own eyes. And when he did according to his own judgment, he despised being corrected for his faults through the spirit of hatred. We're going, let me continue reading. We can see how this came about. And regarding this matter, I was wroth with Joseph until the day that he was sold. And the spirit of hatred was in me. And I wished not either to hear of Joseph with the ears or see him with the eyes, because he rebuked us to our faces, saying that we were eating of the flock without Judah. Notice, he was upset because Joseph spoke the truth to him. All right. This is a struggle for Gadites. They don't like to be corrected, especially corrected in truth. This is what they struggle with. Now, Zach, if you jump back, verse 9, it says, Regarding this matter, I was wroth, please. And regarding this matter, I was wroth with Joseph until the day he was sold. Now, this spirit of hatred was in Gad, and that spirit caused him to struggle with anger, to be wroth with his brother through envy. As you can see, as he has started talking about how his father loved him greatly and whatnot, he envied Joseph. This is something that Gad also struggled with. You have hastiness of spirit that works with Satan to lead them to hatred, and that hatred of heart leads them to envy their brother. Hence, these things affect you children of Gad today. So we have to be mindful of envy also. Your father's going to tell you more about it as we go along, but telling you about it beforehand so you can know what you're looking for here. We see what leads Gad to anger, right? The envy through hatred. And the focus for Gad is a spirit of hatred, as he said, and the spirit of hatred was in me. 
that's the root struggle for for God. It, hatred, and you know how it works against you is through hastiness. So you can overcome by being temperate and really slowing down and assessing things better to make sure it doesn't lead you the wrong way. All right, continue, please. And the spirit of hatred was in me, and I wish not either to hear Joseph with the ears or see him with the eyes. And there you see, through the spirit of hatred, God struggles with forgiveness, having compassion or showing mercy. They are today, children of God, you may not think one is completely hateful, but the struggle with bitterness or resentment or holding a grudge or just not letting th things go. These are things that you children of God are being attacked with today. And through Yache, you can be delivered from it. And hopefully the admonitions of your father helps you overcome the things that are attacking you, knowing that it's a spiritual battle that is waged against you through Satan. Right? Because he rebuked us to our faces, saying that we were eaten of the flock without Judah. Right. And as we touch on the despising of dominion, because he didn't, Judah, as we know, Judah is the king. Judah had been a leader of his brethren of all time, evidently. And that was Gaz's issue, being in subjection, not being obedient to the order, doing things in disorderliness. He wanted to walk in his own ways. This is Gad today. They, as Paul said in Romans chapter 10, they established their own righteousness not submitting themselves to the righteousness of Allah Hayyam. So they have their own, their own view of what is righteous and what's right. Uh, okay. Yeah, the Patriots will touch on it again later on too. All right. Uh, we touch on how, how the spirit of anger gets Gad to fall through envy. And let's get the precept to understand how that works. Can you read the Testament of Dan, chapter 2, verse 4, uh, four and 5, please? For the spirit of anger encompassed him with the net of deceit, and blinded his eyes, and through lying darkened his mind, and giveth him his own peculiar vision. And that's why God said, I wish not to hear of Joseph with, his, with the ears or see him with the eyes. Anger had blinded him, right? So his mind is already disturbed. He couldn't think or see straight. And continue in Dan, please. And wherewith encompasseth it his eyes. With hatred, How did it get him? With hatred right. of heart, so as to be envious of his brother. So you see how the hatred that was in Gad led him into anger and envy? Now, hopefully this helps you children of Gad to see how these spirits work against you. Because once you know the attacks, now you can better prepared to stand in the faith against it. Now... Gad's children are in the same case, struggling with the spirit of hatred through hastiness. They are easily given over to anger through envy. For children of Gad, in, in simple talk, that's you're hot-headed, um, you're touchy. Somebody said a wrong thing, what, you, you're ready to react. Ready to blow up. Right. I have to be mindful of that, sons and daughters of Gad. All right. Your father, Gad, I, <laughs> thankfully overcame these spiritual struggles and has left you an example and admonition of how to overcome through repentance. God confessed his fault to receive forgiveness as the righteous do, which was the beginning of his journey to repentance. Uh, can you read Psalms 32 and 5, please? I acknowledge my sin unto thee, the mine iniquity have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto Ahia, and thou forgavest the iniquity of my sin. Shalom. That lets you know it starts with speaking truth in your heart to confess your faults. That, as we know, Psalms 15 talks about speaking truth in our hearts. That's how we shall dwell in the holy hill. And if you remember, if you've been from along with us, in the Testament of Dan, Dad instructed his children to speak truth. Truth is essential within yourselves because this battle is within you. You're fighting against your own selves. Children of God. I want you to hold on to that too. Um, we're going to bring that back up. Speaking truth in your own heart. That's, that's one of the major things that keeps Gad where they are. When the patriarch talked about it, you got to remember that. Okay. 
let's go to see how Gad showed his example of being a believer and how he overcame on with his confession. Testament of Gad, chapter 2. Uh, Testament of Gad, chapter 2, verse 1. I confess now my sin, my children, that oftentimes I wish to kill him because I hated him from my heart. You see, it, it was rooted in him. But through acknowledging it, he had started a process to overcome it. Be a truth of himself. Continue, please. Moreover, I hated him yet more for his dreams. And there's the envy that he struggled with. Continue, please. And I wish to lick him out of the land of the living, even as an ox licketh up the grass of the field. Therefore I and Simeon sold him to the Ishmaelites for thirty pieces of gold. And ten of them we hid, and showed the twenty to our brethren. And thus through covetousness we were bent on slaying him. Children of Gad is also covetous for gain. And they will steal money with guile. That is the characteristics of the Gadites. Have an issue with money. Greed for money and will steal it with subtlety. Continue, please, in verse 5. Chapter 2, verse 5. And the Elohim of my fathers delivered him from my hands, that I should not work lawlessness in Israel. And today, the children of Gad also struggle with being lawless. And this ties back to what we spoke about, how Gad establishes their own righteousness. They do us right in their own sight. Hence, their work in lawlessness because it's not according to the law of Allah. Through hatred, Gad was lawless in his works. His children struggle with the same by establishing their own righteousness and doing what's right in their own eyes, even as he did with the lamb against the judgment of Judah. You can see how the stories help understand better now. After Gad learned through experience and repentance how hatred works against him unto lawlessness, he was diligent to instruct his children to avoid it and gave them admonitions to listen to words of truth and work righteousness to overcome hatred, which causes them to believe lies and work lawlessness. I mean, can you read chapter 4, verse 1, please? The Testament of Gad, chapter 4, verse 1. Beware, therefore, my children of hatred. Or work of lawlessness, even against Ahia himself. He knew what it did. When he repented, he understood how we fell into that lawless mindset and that lawless deed that he sought to do, or complete, I should say. Therefore, he gave you warning. Avoid it. Avoid it with all your heart. Let's continue in uh, chapter 3, verse 1, please. And now, my children, hearken to the words of truth to work righteousness. And all the law of the Most High, and go not astray through the spirit of hatred. It's all important to hearken to words of truth. Speaking truth in your heart. Acknowledging what is actually going on. So that the spirit of hatred cannot keep a hold on you through lying. And lead you into lawless deeds. But when you truly hearken and listen to the words of truth, it's going to lead you to work righteousness. They go hand in hand, keep you in the law of the Most High and not to go astray. Let's continue, please. For it is evil in all the doings of men. Whatsoever a man doeth, the hater abominateth him. And there we see with Gad, when hatred is on you and in, in, in you, there's nothing somebody can do right, no matter what they do. Quote unquote, the children of Gad struggle with being haters for our common language today. There's nothing a person can do right in their sight that they hate. All right? Continue, please. And though a man worketh the law of Ahia, he praiseth him not. Though a man feareth Ahia and taketh pleasure in that which is righteous, he loveth him not. He dispraiseth the truth, envieth him that prospereth. He welcometh evil speaking. He loveth arrogance. That's why God struggles with pride. Uh, they struggle with arrogance today. And a lot of the Gadites, they cleave to, to doctrines of pride and arrogance. A lot of them cleave unto like the doctrine, tough Israelite doctrines, or things that are usually like putting people down. Because it's the arrogance. They love the arrogance and the, and the self-pride. Uh, it usually goes into, you know, we are Israel and stuff like that. And that's why a lot of them leave unto the tribe of Judah because it puts them at a point of power. It 
it puts them as you know we're kings or it, 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 it furthers the arrogance that tribe of gad have the issue with the mindful children of gad have an inclination to hearken into false doctrine that's why it says he dispraises the truth because spirit of hatred causes it to love lies All right but hatred blindeth his soul his engine of God is telling you exactly how it worked because he experienced it. He said, as I also then looked upon Joseph, after really going through self-examination, because that's a part of the work of repentance, he could see it for what it was. And this is why he is encouraging you on to hark into the words of truth. Because when you're speaking truth in your heart, you can really look at what's going on truly and see how these spirits work against you. You know, as Zach, well, you mentioned how children of Gad, a majority of these hateful doctrines and teachings and groups today, a lot of the Gadites are in it. Right. We talked about how anger affects them. And a lot of Gadites are angry for slavery, for what happened to the indigenous people and things of that nature. That anger helps blind their soul not to see truly and believe the true doctrine, but to cleave on to the evil speaking as it says he welcometh evil speaking he loveth arrogance the uh, as these doctrines push so god have to very much be on god not to be led astray through hatred into false doctrine and also a false mindset you know let's continue please uh the testament of god chapter 4 verse 1 beware therefore my children of hatred for work of lawlessness even against Ahaya himself. Hopefully that helps you after seeing what he talked about in chapter three, it helps you better understand why he was encouraging you to beware of it. Because he just told you everything that happened to him when he looked on Joseph the wrong way. And he doesn't want you to fall into the same mistakes he did. Right? And now he's going to give you more understanding of how hatred works against you all, as it worked against him because you are of his seed. All right, continue, please. For it would not hear the words of his commandments concerning the loving of one's neighbor. And that's very much why there are groups and that go so hard today, because through hatred, they won't hear actual love. Continue, please. And it sinneth against Allah. That's the lawlessness that hatred leads them on to. For if a brother stumble, he delighteth immediately to proclaim it to all men. And it's urgent that he should be judged for it and be punished to be put to death. And we see that's that lack of mercy that hatred leads them on. If you do them wrong or if you cross them, that's it. There's no coming back. It's a very short fuse and there's no forgiveness through the spirit of hatred. So hopefully, as your father is attesting it, hopefully you can see that that's something you need to look inside the heart and really pray yeah i should deliver you from all right continue please and if it be a servant it stirs him up against his master that's the despising of dominion as god would not hearken to the judgment of judah and reuben and with every affliction it devises against him if possible he can be put to death all right just looking for a way to destroy his neighbor that's the guile the deceit and the malice that hatred brings and god sadly when they don't like you when they hate you they're trying to take you out and they would be pleased to see you taken out from how the spirit of hatred attacks them but hatred worketh with envy also against them that prosper you know this isn't the first time gad mentioned envy so it's it's for sure that that's something the children struggle with and lead them on to having such mindset so long as they hear it though or see if their success it always languishes. And this is why they're, they're people that uh, can struggle with sorrow or be depressed and whatnot because they look at what everyone else has going on. That's, and remember, God mentioned through covetousness, they were bent on slaying him. Covetousness caused them to, they're trying to keep up with the Joneses, so to speak. But as love would quicken even the dead, and would call back them that are condemned to die. So hatred would slay the living. And those that had sinned linearly, it would not suffer to live. That again, 
touches on the lack of mercy or forgiveness. You venially is like you do something that's light, like it wasn't even that bad of an error, but they make it into a big deal. Um, verse seven for the spirit. The spirit of hatred worketh together with Satan through hastiness of spirit and all things to men's death. But there you see all these things. God gave all this understanding of how hatred works and then let you know what Satan uses to get you to fall to it. Hastiness. This is where for God, you have to really be temperate, not to jump, not to, you know, ready to blow up when someone says something or someone does something or there's some mistake that happened. Temperance is key for you to overcome. And it's through love. The, Continue, please. But the spirit of love worketh together with the law of Elohim and long suffering unto the salvation of men. Your father, he he experienced it. Long suffering is key for you. That will help you overcome the hastiness and the hatred. Your words of your father are sure because Ahaya put it in his heart. These words are inspired by the spirit. So now you have understanding of how you can overcome all these things that were mentioned. Simply love through long suffering with the law of Allah. That's the simplicity of Christ for you, the children of God. Continue, please. Testament of God, chapter 5, verse 1. Hatred, therefore, is evil, for it constantly made it with lying. Speaking against the truth. That was the part I was touching on that guy was going to bring back up about speaking against the truth. What was the thing I wanted you to remember? Remember truth. Speaking truth in the heart. Right, and that's one thing that would cause Gad to to not repent. It's because they are they don't speak truth to themselves. Through having their own perception of what's right they don't correct themselves. So what happens is it stops them from repenting because they, they're so adamant that what they did was right. They don't examine themselves to speak truth in their heart and it doesn't lead them to repent. So that's one of the main, main snares of the enemy that's used against Gad to stop them from actually turning to Allah. Now that should help you better understand why Gad, your father, is telling you to hearken to words of truth. Because he just told you hatred is evil and it makes with lying. There's a spirit that's lying to you and there's a spirit that's telling you the truth. You have that inner battle in your heart, the angel of iniquity versus the angel of righteousness. And as your father admonished that long suffering, that's hearkening to the angel of righteousness. So God, I check the shepherd of Hermas. Mandate six, mandate five and six, because your ang the anger through envy and hatred of heart is what leads you to hearken on the lies as well. So you want to overcome anger and also want to be sure you're hearkening to words of truth from the angel of righteousness. So Shepherd of Hermas, mandate five and six is essential for your growth. And your father, it's amazing, he was speaking of it in the words that Ahaya put in his heart in these books. So hopefully that helps overcome so that Yate may strengthen you, children of God. Uh, let's continue. And um, it maketh small things to be great. It, when he said he called the small things to be great, that was where if you sin venially, he you he would not suffer you to live. And he causes the light to be darkness. That's where through the lion it's easy to believe a lie. The lie you're li being lied to in your mind, hence susceptible to believing a lie or false doctrine. Continue, please. All of the sweet, bitter. You, they establish their own righteousness. What is pleasing to them is what they go by. So it's going to be contrary to what's actually sweet. According to the sweet things of the spirit, like the fruits of the spirit, they would more cleave to the bitterness which is the works of the flesh. Teach you slander. Evident God, the Gadites are out here teaching today, and the doctrines they're teaching are false. Slanders, they're not true. All right, continue, please. And kindle this wrath. 
we touched already on the, how Gad is the hatred leads them to anger and whatnot. Continue, please. Interesting. Um, just speaking very, very straightly and truthfully, a lot of the doctrines about uh, you know, banging on Edom and stuff like that come from Gad. It's telling it, telling it very honestly, telling it. And stir up a war and violence in all covenants. That's why. Right. The doctrines look forward to that. They look forward to fighting and destroying and whatnot. It's that's what they push. It filleth the heart with evils and devilish poison. Right. And as he touched all covetousness, hatred leads to all covetousness. This is where Gad also struggles with fornication as well. And covetousness altogether. All right, Zach you may be able to touch on that how the covetousness works a little better. Uh, what do you mean? With like how they, they well, I guess it's simply just covet what everyone else has. So covets, just covetousness. Yeah, it says that um, whenever a man prospereth, they envy of him. So they, um, they have a thing with material, material gain. Um, usually a guy like will have more than enough. They will, um, they will have more um, car that's fancier than what they actually need, a house that's bigger than what they need. Uh, they will have many items, more than what they can deal with themselves, all because of their covetousness, all because of, um, of wanting to have more than the next person. So uh, that's how the, the covetousness works with Gad. Um, pretty much keeping up with the Joneses or, or doing better than, than their fellow man. Also, you can see that a lot of the quote unquote people in the streets, like gang bangers types and whatnot, those are, there are a lot of Gadites out there too. Their environment is covetousness, is anger, war, violence, the spirit of hatred. And they're also in groups, they're in troops. So Gadites are out there in the streets as well. That's, I get the streets get a hold of them pretty easy with the spirits that attack them as well. Hatred causes Gad to struggle with lying, being petty to make small things great, having pleasure in unrighteousness, slandering, kindling anger. And through these spirits, they get into altercations and it gets violent pretty easy. Hatred also causes them to be covetous. And let's continue with the admonitions of your father to understand how to overcome, please. These things, therefore, I say to you from experience, my children, that ye may drive forth hatred, which is of the devil, and cleave to the love of Elohim. Ah, his grace is to have your father tell you about these things and help you know it, like it's confirmed that it happens because he experienced it himself. And you see the, the sincerity he walked in and the truth that he walked in that he was telling, he was shooting straight with you. Like, this is what happened to me. This is how it works. And for you guys, I said, listen, you, you, can't, you are who you are. And now we're just thankful. Hopefully you appreciate it as well that Ahaya had left you this admonition from your father to know that cleaving to the love of Allah Hayyam would deliver you from it, would deliver you from it all. Your father said to do, to hearken to words of truth, to work righteousness, and to cleave to the love of Allah Hayyam, and to be long-suffering. These are some of the admonitions of your father to overcome these things. These are key for you children of God. God understood what happened to him through experience and shared it with his children that they may guard themselves and drive out the spirit of hatred through righteousness. So this is the next thing, work in righteousness. Can you continue reading in chapter 5, verse 2, please? Righteousness casteth out hatred. Humility destroyeth envy. You see how also now you know how to dis overcome the arrogance and the envy. Humility. That would deliver you from the arrogance and the envy that you, your tribe struggles with. All right? So keep these things in heart, children of God. Hearken to words of righteousness. Cleave to love, 
of Allah Hayyam, the long suffering, work righteousness, walk in humility. These will keep you. All right, continue, please. But he that is just and humble is ashamed to do that which is unjust. Being reproved not of another, but of his own heart, because the higher looketh on his inclination. All right, verse seven, please. That was very key, though. You um, definitely don't want to over overread this. It says, "For he that is just and humble, right, is ashamed to do what is unjust, being reproved not of another, but of his own heart." So Gad, a lot of Gadites, it takes you to come out of it. There's nothing that nobody can say to you. You have to literally come to the understanding and examine yourself to come out of it. Because quite frankly, Gadites, they don't want to hear it from anybody else. So it's going to take you, it's going to take al to work in you. And for you to see it within yourself to come out of it. Amen. Verse 7, please. These things I learned at last, after I had repented concerning Joseph. Your father ain't telling no lie, children of God. It wasn't something someone else said to him. He had to come to the conclusion. He had to be brought to that place. So, in agreement with Brother Zachwal, why I put in his heart there, as we see God, I tell Overcome hatred when they are reproved within themselves by their own hearts through repentance. Hence, it's only Allah Hayyam that can turn the heart of the Gadites to be converted in their hearts to obey the truth of Christ through repentance. Uh, Proverbs 16 and 9. A man's heart divides his way, but a higher directed his steps. That lets you know if you are involved with a Gadite or you have to understand you have to wait on Ahaya to do it. You have to wait. Let's be patient on Ahaya to direct their steps toward his righteousness. And definitely Bless. walk your own self. If you're in a relationship, you know, if, you're, if that's your spouse or your wife or your, or your husband, that's a Gadite, you have to definitely be an example of a believer yourself and then allow Allah to turn their heart. It's not going to be you that's going to turn their heart. But you have to continue to do what's right the sight of Allah in yourself to be a testimony against God. Joseph was his example of righteousness to help turn him. Joseph loved him all the way through. And as you see, his focus was on Joseph. It's interesting, the one he envies is the one who ends up telling <laughs> who's there to turn his heart. Oh, I have be praised. So. This is why we always encourage our preaching to be by our actions. Be an example of a believer that is going to work for any nation, any tribe to help them see the love of Christ and be converted in their hearts. You definitely, um, so the hard part about God is that they, they think everybody operates based off of their own, their own mental um, idealism they the the way that they think they treat everybody as the way they think and they think that everybody can operate based off of how they would operate in the situation so joseph not operating like gad would have acted or would have operated based on the situation the testimony against gad so that's what one of the things that actually turned gad that helped turn him With this understanding of seeing that it's Ahaya that doeth, does it in his heart, it helps better understand that blessing that Moses gave when he said, Blessed be he that enlargeth Gad. This enlargement of the children of Gad in these end times is not merely that they're going to fight, but they're going to abound in the fruits of the Spirit. They're going to be very, very righteous when Yahche is formed in their hearts. They're going to be, have that zeal for Allah that holy sorrow, that holy repentance that shall come here in these end times. Uh, can you read 2 Corinthians chapter 7, 
verse 10 and 11, please. For Elohim, for Elohim, for Elohim the sorrow, work of repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world work of death. Now you see the conversion. God is going to turn on to the holy sorrow of repentance that will cause them to speak truth in their heart. That is going to lead them unto repentance and truth. Then they're going to hearken to words of righteousness. I mean, to words of truth and work righteousness. They're going to walk and cleave to the love of Allah and have compassion, be long-suffering to help them overcome the spirits that attack them and destroy envy. And they're also going to walk in humility to destroy arrogance. And these things would lead Gad onto life as opposed to the sorrow of death, which used to lead them to their, to their grave through spirits of hatred, being envious of others and languishing when others are prospering and things of that nature. All right, continue, please. For behold, the self-same thing that ye saw after Elohim resort, what carefulness it wrought in you. You see how repentance works in them? They're going to be careful paying attention, making sure they don't get hasty in anything, but staying temperate, not to fall, all right? Yea, what clearing of yourselves? Yea, what indignation? Yea, what fear? Yea, what vehement desire? Yea, what zeal? Yea, what revenge? In all things, you have approved yourselves to be clear in this matter. There you see how repentance truly works. When God was careful, that when he's careful and goes forward, work in righteousness, is going to clear all the former deeds he did. For example, we know in the Shepherd of Hermes, it talks about the spirit of lying, right? If we speak truth, our former sins will become truthful. I mean, our former deeds will not be, basically will not be in trouble for our former deeds if we go forward speaking truth. So that being careful will lead to clearing your old errors. And then that indignation you have, that zeal for doing what's right, that because now you cleave to that love of Allah Hayyam, it leads you to the fear of Ahaya. And you'll be afraid to do what's wrong in his sight. As it was mentioned, your father Gad said, the just and humble man is afraid to sin against someone else, being reproved of his own heart. And that vehement desire, because now that you're cleaved onto the love of Allah, that's your whole desire to fulfill his will. And you're going to be zealous for it. And that is the true vengeance that you'll be taking, that overcoming of the troops. God, to make it, to tie into the spiritual things, the troops that are coming at the last, it said Gash had over, has been appointed to him to destroy the troops that come at the last. It's not only the sinners of the Gentiles that are coming, physical people, but also there is a flood of evil spirits that is to come in these end times. And through work and righteousness, the children of Gad will overcome these evil spirits by faith in Yache and him enlarging them to overcome evil within and evil without. Okay? And they'll be approved as servants of Allah in the end. And we are very thankful for what Allah is doing for the children of Gad. And can we read Romans chapter 6? Verse 17, please. But Allah be thanked that you were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which would deliver you. You see how the true gospel delivers them in the heart? Because the spirit of hatred was in their heart, but as they come unto the truth, hearing the words of truth and believing, they would be cleaved on to it in their hearts to obey in all things. They won't have an issue with self-righteousness or despising dominion. It will be whatever Yahweh's will is, they're for it. Even as the righteous Gadites with Moses, they didn't put their swords down or go home until the whole land got delivered for the people. They came with a perfect heart. Even when they came to the stronghold with David, they came with a perfect heart. Right? Uh, faith is key. Um, Romans chapter 10, verse 10, and verse 4, and chapter 2, verse 29, please. Romans chapter 10, verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, 
and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Right. It's all that, that inner battle within yourselves, what you believe, what you speak in truth, faith will deliver you. All right, continue, please. Romans chapter 10, verse 4. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. And when you believe, you know what you're pressing toward. You know what your end goal is, Christ, to be as our Savior. Right? And this is key for all of our salvation, particularly speaking of the children of God here today, because we have to have that inner man change. We have to have that, that change of heart within us. Uh, chapter 2, verse 29, please. Romans chapter 2, verse 29. That he is a Jew, which is one inwardly. The circumcision is that of the heart, in the spirit, and not in the letter. Whose praise is not of men, but of Elohim. And it's amazing you see how the spirit is going to bring that conversion to where Gadites, they will no longer glory in arrogance of we are the children of Israel, you know, and things of that nature. Their glory is going to be in the Elohim, in the spirit true Israelites in spirit and truth, worshiping Allah from a pure heart with charity and love unfeigned. Through the scripture, we can see the conversion that Allah is going to work in God in these end times. The purification of the heart by Christ within, God, shall deliver them from hatred unto love for one another with a pure heart fervently through the spirit. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 22 and 23, please. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth to the Spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. There's a growth that's going to, uh, that we, may I have be gracious, we get to see in the children of God. Sorry. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of Allah, which liveth and abideth forever. Being having you actually formed in us, being born, being born of water and spirit, as you actually talked about in John three and five, you can see that the conversion, the gospel was in God. God was speaking of these righteous things in in spirit with little words. He was speaking of a whole lot. God experienced the truth of the gospel in His own conversion through repentance, that His children may have an example and know all things are possible with Allah for them to believe. They can change. Uh, Testament of God, chapter 5, verse 2. Continue, please. These things, therefore, I say to you from experience, my children, that ye may drive forth hatred, which is of the devil, and cleave to the love of Allah. Righteousness casteth out hatred. Humility destroys envy. But he that is just and humble is ashamed to do what is unjust, being reproved not of another but of his own heart. Because higher looked on his inclination. He speaketh not against an, a holy man, because the fear of Allah overcometh hatred. For fearing least he should offend Ahaya, he will not do wrong as any man. Remember we talked about how God, through covetousness and whatnot, they always look at what everyone else has going on. Now you see in the conversion of the heart, God is just focusing on what's right in the sight of Allah. Everything is what's right in Ahaya's eyes. He don't, I don't want to offend Allah. He's, his, right. It was a complete change. But this is what's key for you, children of God. What is focused on what is right in the sight of Allah, not men. Let that be your focus as your father is attesting how that's, that's how you know when you're attaining unto that humility. When you're attaining unto being that just and humble man that is ashamed to do what is unjust unto anyone else for fear of Allah, I am. All right? Continue, please. He will not do wrong to any man, even in thought. It's a growth process. Change your actions without and focus on changing your actions within. Right. And not even think evil. That's key. Gadites have evil thoughts. They may not act on them but they have them. And that's also a testimony of the hatred that they struggle with. So focus on that as well to undo those wicked imaginations and don't agree with them. But 
thing. These things I learned at last, after I had repented concerning Joseph. But true repentance after a holy sort destroys ignorance, and driveth away the darkness. That's what we just read about in Second Corinthians chapter seven. And in, and, in, and enlighteneth the eyes, and giveth knowledge to the soul, and leadeth the mind to salvation. Right. And those things which it hath not learnt from man, it knoweth through repentance. And this this was key, what Gaz spoke about here. Uh, repentance leads to self-examination which is the calling of the gospel. God learned all these things by examining what was going on within him to drive away the ignorance, as he said, how repentance of a, after a holy sword destroyeth ignorance. And having his eyes enlightened by the doctrine of Christ to give knowledge to his soul. See how that true repentance was key because he started off by saying, these things I learned at last after I had repented concerning Joseph. So your, your, your journey starts with repentance. Start with speaking that truth, confessing your faults. And then you can get that burden off you to start moving forward. And, and walk in that true repentance to destroy the ignorance of the former deeds. And drive away that darkness by the light of the law. The judgments of Allah. Right? And it cleanses you. It really cleanses you because it gives knowledge to your soul. No longer will those former ways have dominion, but the lot, the knowledge of Allah will rule in you. And that is going to help ease your mind. You won't struggle with um, those racing thoughts or all that stress within your mind anymore. But it leads you on to the salvation of Allah Let's continue, please. For Allah I am brought upon me a disease of the liver. Had not the prayer of Jacob my father succored me, it had hardly failed, but my spirit had departed. There we see the spirit of hatred also attacks the body. Children of God, they have health issues when dealing with the spirit of hatred, uh, particularly something with the liver. So as it is attested, it, it happens. It might have skin issues, you know, things like that. that affect them and we know it's from the spirit of hatred working against them all right continue please for by what things a man transgresses by the same also is he punished since therefore my liver was set mercilessly against joseph and my liver too i suffered mercilessly and was judged for 11 months for so long a time as I have been angry against Joseph. So children of God, Ahaya sees, Ahaya, he's, he's, he's righteous. He, what, what you do is going to come back on you. That's something that you can't avoid. So avoid being merciless. As your father showed what happened when he was merciless. You are encouraged to walk in the mercy of Allah. And the Testament of Zebulon will be very helpful for you. And it's interesting that we just came off of that one. Understand how compassion and mercy can deliver, right? And deliver from health issues as well. So we see the spirit of hatred, which engenders bitterness or resentment, as was the case for Gad, causes sickness and infirmities unto men. That lack of mercy for a neighbor was also testified in Zebulon, how it causes health issues. Uh, Testament of Zebulon, Jehovah chapter 5, and then chapter 8, verse 1, please. Testament of Zebulon, chapter 5, verse 1. And now, my children, I bid you to keep the commandments of Ahia and to show mercy to your neighbors, and to have compassion toward all, not toward men only, but also toward beasts. For all this thing's sake, Ahia blessed me. And when all my brethren were sick, I escape without sickness, for Ahia knoweth the purpose of each. Have therefore compassion in your hearts, my children, because even as a man doeth to his neighbor, so also will Ahia do to him. That is important. That is important to keep in mind. 
do as you would have others do unto you. That's the fulfilling of the law, loving your neighbor as yourself. For the sons of my brother were sickening, were sickening and were dying on account of Joseph, because they showed not mercy in their hearts. But my sons were preserved without sickness, as ye know. The Testament of Zebulon chapter 8 verse 1. Have therefore yourself also, my children, compassion towards every man with mercy, that a higher also may have compassion and mercy upon you. And that's a good admonition for the children of God, seeing as though mercilessness was a struggle. You have admonitions to overcome it. So compassion towards every man with mercy, that you may, that Ahaya may have mercy upon you, have compassion and mercy upon you as well. Um, God's children experience health complications when they are being overcome with hatred. Hatred is the direct opposite to compassion and mercy. One ought to have for one's neighbor, as everyone spoke of. So Gadites and their health complications are in connection with their lack of forgiveness and mercy for others because they bear grudges or are resentful easily. Gad understood these things and gave his children admonition on forgiveness so that they may not be afflicted as he was. Uh, Testament of Gad, chapter 6, verse 1, please. And now, my children, I exhort you. Love ye each one of one his neighbor, excuse me. Love ye each one his brother, and put away hatred from your hearts. Love one another in deed, and in word, and in the inclination of the soul. It's key what God said here as well. He gave you the exhortation to overcome love and put away hatred. Then he was specific to tell you, make sure that love is a deed word and an inclination of soul your love has to be wholehearted can't be fake because gadites struggle with guile this is something that's key with gadites as well they can they can fake it they can speak well or even act well towards a person but in their soul the spirit of hatred leads them astray and gad he's testifying of what's going on with you guys as in verse two continue please for in the presence of my father, I spake peaceably to Joseph. And when I had gone out, the spirit of hatred darkened my mind and stirred up my soul to slay him. So you see how God appeared peaceable and good in the sight of men, but inwardly he was overcome with darkness. His children faced the same struggles of respecting of persons by trying to seem peaceable on the outside, but their soul is darkened through hatred. Yet he, he exhorts you to overcome these things. That's why he wanted you to love people in, in deed, in word, and in inclination of soul. So that it's wholehearted, that it's sincere, and you walk in in truth, so that you don't have these issues to lead you astray. Uh, chapter 6, verse 3, please. Love ye therefore one another from the heart. And if a man sin against thee, cast forth the poison of hate and speak peaceably to him. And in thy soul, that, hold no, no guile. That confirms, as we talk about God's struggle with guile, as he understood that he was walking in guile himself when he was speaking peaceably but really hated him. This is something that he's admonishing you. Don't hold it in your soul. Let it go. Forgive. And also we touched on how Gad struggles with being um, ready to blow up, being short-tempered. Your father admonishes you to speak peaceably. Even if someone does you wrong, cast for the poison of hate and speak peaceably to him. Stay temperate. Keep your speech seasoned with salt, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Continue, please. And if he confess and repent, forgive him. But if he deny it, do not get into a passion with him. Please catching the poison from thee, he take to swim, so thou sin doubly. And your father also encourages you stay out of you can't stay out of arguments with people, and don't get into passion with them. Stay out of debates because it's going to cause you to error. And remember, uh, overcome guile. You overcome guile with simplicity, and sincerity. That's how you overcome guile. As your father instructed. And if someone doesn't apologize or don't admit that they were wrong, 
Don't get into an argument with them about it. Continue to speak peaceable. So we don't want to set a stumbling block for them or ourselves. It's interesting. He said, less catching the poison from thee, because he can see that you Gadites struggle with getting getting angry and getting in the emotions and you know start yelling and whatnot. Hence he, he knew it would happen. That's what he said. Don't get into passion with him, lest catching the poison from thee, he take the swearing and sin doubly. So you can lead somebody else to sin by getting angry with them and then yelling at them and whatnot or cursing at them, and it's going to cause them to fall. So your father's encouraging you to walk in charity because charity seeketh not after its own. So you don't want to argue for your soul's sake, and also you don't want to argue lest you cause somebody else to fall. You can see how your father was really encouraging you to walk in the gospel of Christ. Be an example of believing in all situations. Um, uh, hopefully that really helps. Help you real quick. It said, um, but if you deny it, do not get into a passion with him. He's catching the poison from me. So that would be the God. I, he takes the swearing and so thou sin doubly. It's a double sin unto the Gadite. Because the Gadite actually, uh, he's the one who ties the situation. All right. And then they're probably going to take it further from there. So then you're going to sin double. All right. But you're not going to be able to stop yourself. It's, it's all important to avoid that hastiness, to, to be short tempered, that hastiness to just say whatever comes to mind. It really help you to walk in that long suffering and to speak peaceably to a person and don't try, don't try to force the issue. Let things be. That's an important part for Gadites. Let not another man hear thy secrets when engaged in legal strife. Is he come to hate thee, to become thy enemy, and commit a great sin against thee? For oft times he addresses thee Guilefully and busy right. as himself Project. about you with wicked intent. <laughs> Funny thing is, the guy's about to go into how Gadites deal with other Gadites. <laughs> oh. That's <laughs> he what tried, it was about. He's teaching them how to deal with your brother. Go on. And though he deny it, and yet have a sense of shame when reproved, give over reproving him. But he who denieth may repent, so as not again to wrong thee. Yea, he may also honor thee, and fear, and be at peace with thee. And if he be shameless, and persist in his wrongdoing, even so forgive him from the heart. Lead to Allah the avenging. That's the thing that Gadites do. They may not admit the fault, but they'll you'll notice a change in how they operate. When they uh, when they repent of what they did, and if they are shameless, you have to just let them be. And forgive them from the heart. Commit it unto Allah it's in his hands. If a man prospers more than you, do not be vexed. But pray also for him that he may have perfect prosperity. For so it is expedient for you. And if he be further exalted, be not envious of him, remembering that all flesh shall die. Offer praise to Allah for giving things good and possible to all men. That was important. He doesn't want you all to get, get in a fit about anything. Don't be vexed through envy of what other people are being prospered and other, or the good things that are happening to others. You know, that'll keep you. If someone's doing well, continue to pray for them. If someone is having, continue to pray that they get prospered even further. That really destroys envy. And uh, that's why you said, for it is expedient for you. <laughs> and that's what really gets you away from that spirit and to help you, All right? And staying in humility, remember that all flesh shall die. Like, be holiness with contentment is great gain. What Ahaya gives to one, he does according to his pleasure. And let it be so. He talked about being vexed. 
Don't get angry. This is why we're going into the Testament of God here to understand how anger works a little bit for the children of God. Read chapter 4, verse 1 to 7, please. To understand that being vexed, how anger works so you can stay away from it. I'm going to jump back to 7 just to refresh and go into the Testament of God. Uh, okay. The Testament of God took the 7, verse 1. If a man prospers more than you, do not be vexed, but pray also for him, that he may have perfect prosperity. Uh, so we're going to go into the Testament of Dan, chapter 4, verse 1. Understand ye therefore the power of wrath, that is vain. For first of all, give it provocation by word, then by deeds and strengtheneth him who is angry, and with sharp losses disturbeth his mind, and so stirreth up with great wrath his soul. Therefore, when anyone speaketh against you, be ye not ye moved to anger. And if any man pray to you as holy men, be not uplifted. Be not moved either to delight or to disgust. For first it pleaseth the hearing, and so maketh the mind king to perceive the grounds for provocation. And then being enraged, he thinketh that he is justly angry. If you fall into any loss or ruin, my children, be not afflicted. For this very spirit maketh a man desire that which is perishable, in order that he may be enraged through the affliction. And if ye suffer loss voluntarily or involuntarily, be not vexed. For from vexation ariseth wrath with lying. Moreover, a twofold mischief is wrath with lying. And they assist one another in order to disturb the heart. And when the soul is continually disturbed, a higher departed from it, and belly are ruled over it. So you see why your father encouraged you not to be vexed. Because that wrath and anger is going to lead you for Ahaya to depart from you and belly to rule you. And it's, you see it's going to disturb your soul, cause you a lot of anguish inside. You won't be able to rest, you know, a lot of race and thoughts, you know. Uh, can you read Testament of Dan, chapter 3, verse 1, please? For anger is an evil thing, my children, for it troubleth even the soul itself. And that's why that's an issue that guys have. They have a lot going on within. It's, it's a real inner thing with God. And God gave you instruction, his children, to overcome these things, these racing thoughts and the, the, the anguish you have in your mind. Testament of God, chapter 7, verse 3, please. Speak out the judgments of Ahaya. Thy mind will rest and be at peace. That's the key. That's what you need to do when your mind is, whether you're racing thoughts, you, you know, you can't calm down. Speak the judgments of Ahaya. Go into the word. That's what your father instructed you to do. That'll cause your mind to rest and be at peace. He, he knows it from experience, so what he's attested will help you. Uh, continue chapter 7, please. You're at verse 4 now. And though a man become rich by evil means, even as Esau, the brother of my father, be not jealous. So don't envy regardless whether they are prospered by Allah or they're prospered in wickedness. Be not jealous of it. Stay away from jealousy and envy. That will lead you astray. All right, continue, please. But wait for the end of Ahaya. And if he taketh away from a man wealth gotten by evil means, he forgiveth him if he repent. But the unrepentant is reserved for eternal punishment. There you see, don't, don't get jealous. Be temperate. Be long-suffering. Wait for the end of Ahaya. Wait for what Ahaya will do. Don't take matters into your own hands. Nah, even if a person, they are getting wealth by evil means, Ahaya takes it from them and they repent, he'll forgive them. Because this, remember, this is what Gadites do as well. So he's also speaking to you, his children, because he attested how he, he stole that money with Simeon. And we talked about how Gadites, they have a struggle. They'll do evil. They'll steal money with guile. He's also letting you know that if you repent, Ahaya will forgive you. But if you don't repent, you're reserved for eternal punishment. Continue, please. For the poor man is free from envy, he pleaseth Ahaya in all things. 
blessed be on all men, because he hath not the travail of vain men. All right. And that's important for you all to overcome that envy so you don't have the travail of vain men. You don't go through the cares of this life that men struggle with through envy. Continue, please. Put away, therefore, jealousy from your souls and love one another with uprightness of heart. It's possible. Your father experienced it and showed you if you put away jealousy from your souls, you'll be delivered. And the key to put away in the jealousy is to love one another in uprightness of heart. That's why you have to seek the judgments of Ahaya so that you may have your mind would rest and be at peace so that you can do all things in uprightness of heart, walking in that love and truth to be able to overcome these things. All right? Continue, please. Do ye also, therefore, tell these things to your children, that they honor Judah and Levi. For from them shall the higher raise of salvation to Israel. For I know that at the last your children shall depart from him, shall walk in all wickedness, in affliction and corruption before Ahiah. God told you to tell these things to your children. As you have seen through this lesson, essentially God was telling you to believe the truth of the gospel, be an example of a believer. He was telling you of the gospel of repentance before it fully came out. And he understood that it was Judah and Levi who was going to be preaching it, the two witnesses. So his exhortations was to keep you even unto the end because he knew from the blessings that he was blessed with by his father, his truth would overcome at the last. So it's important that you believe the true doctrine, identify the two witnesses and believe the words of truth that Ahaya is going to bring forth. Because remember, Yache is who's going to enlarge you. Yache is who's going to empower the two. Yache is going to bring you unto salvation. Okay? Oh, God understood that you need to honor in Judah and Levi, for from them shall Ahiah raise up salvation to Israel. The preaching in the end times will, he knew what was will come. The children of God, since the spirit of hatred causes them to have restless minds, and the spirit of anger troubles their souls to be highly stressed and easily agitated. They had often smoke because it helps them relax or even sleep better. There's a key indication that, and it's for medication for the purpose of helping them relax. Like that's how they stay calm. Ahaya gave admonition of how to overcome that. But it says, Scout the judgment of Ahaya and thy mind will rest and be at peace. I have great admonition for the children of God. You need an increase. You need to have faith in Yacha and seeking the judgments of Ahaya to ease your mind and be at peace. And God gave you that understanding to overcome. Now, he said, seek the judgments of Ahia, so that requires getting into the scriptures, right? Some of the children of God already read the scriptures as we talked about how the, sadly a lot of people, a lot of the false doctrines from the spirits that they're operating in shows that it's coming from the Gadites and or the Gadites lead to it very easily. And that hinders them from understanding the truth of Christ by the way they're approaching the gospel, which is tough for them because if they will come in the right way unto it, it will help give them rest unto their souls. But the approach that they take keeps them where they're at because as Zachwar taught, touched on how they're not doing it in truth or they're not speaking truth to themselves to be able to see things according to the light of Christ. It is key for the children of God to put away arrogance, hatred, and the unmercifulness when seeking the judgments of Ahaya, so that they may be guided and taught in the right ways. He to be meek, to be humble. And we know your father attested that humility driveth away arrogance and envy. So you need, you need the meekness to really understand the gospel. Uh, Psalms 25 and 9, please. The meek will he guide in judgment, and the meek will he teach his way. And that meekness is the spirit of Christ. And that's what you need. It's interesting. You need Yache to really have rest. Uh, Matthew 11, verse 28 and 29, please. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. I am meek and lowly in heart. You shall find rest unto your souls. 
you have the answers according to scriptures to the struggles. Anger disturbeth the soul and disturbeth the mind, right? Yet the meekness and the labor of Yache will give you rest unto your souls. Hatred causes your mind to go through a lot, yet seeking the judgment of Allah Hayyam will give your mind rest and you'll be at peace. God was also instructing you with all these things he was teaching you. He was instructing you to seek wisdom. The Holy Spirit, because she is who leads in the path of judgment. Uh, Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12, 17, and 20, please. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 12. I wisdom to dwell with prudence. Find out knowledge of witty inventions. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 17. I love them that love me, and those that seek me early shall find me. Seek, seek her. Father told you, seek the judgment. Seek her early. Seek her in all things. Right? Continue, please. Proverbs chapter 8, verse 20. I lead in the way, I lead in the way of righteousness. In the midst he of told the path you. of judgment. You see, your father told you, hearken to truth and go in the way of righteousness. This is where the spirit to lead you. He was just telling you what you need to hear to get you in the right direction unto the spirit because she's the one that's going to guide you she'll point you in the right way she's going to carry the mist of the past of judgment to keep you so that you don't fall to the right hand or to the left so if when god's children seek the path of judgment they shall walk in the spirit to overcome all the lust of the flesh the hatred the anger the wrath the variance the slander all these different things the unforgiveness and whatnot they'll be upright because these are the ways that the Spirit lead. Galatians 5, 16 to 18 and 22 to 23, please. Galatians chapter 5, verse 16. This I say then, walk in the Spirit that ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, you are not under the law. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, and faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. All those things, those fruits of the Spirit mentioned, will deliver you from all the things that you go that come against you. You can see how your father gave you good instruction to lead you in the right way. So, may Yahweh enlarge the children of God. May he enlarge them in the fruits of the Spirit, in righteousness, so that they may overcome at the last. Let's finish out chapter 8, verse 3, the testament of God, please. When he had rested for a little while, he said again, My children, obey your father, and bury me near to my father's. He drew up his feet and fell asleep in peace. After departing Egypt, they carried him to Hebron, laid him with his fathers. Well, you have the admonition, children of God. We know that the first commandment we promise is honor your father and your mother so that your days may be prolonged on earth. And now you have the admonitions of your father to overcome. And may Yahweh deliver. All right. All right. Here's a higher. Shout out to everybody. Shout out to